A broken lock, a smashed in door, and a mom and her child held at gunpoint. The home invaders were the last people this family ever expected. Tonight, A.J. Legault investigates what happened and efforts to keep it from happening again. 6.21 a.m., February 11th, Coon Rapids, Minnesota. I was like, Wah! Splintering wood, tearing metal, strange men yelling inside her home. Thinking I was getting robbed. Bianca Mathias. They busted through. Woke up to flashlights and firearms. Two of them had their guns up. The home invaders smashing through the bedroom door of 12-year-old Giselle. The sound was just so quick and I just got really scared. Were they pointing guns at you? Yeah. Down the hall, family friend Justin Garbett was in the guest room. All of a sudden, I, then I had my door burst through and got zip tied. And The surprise intruders holding the pajama-clad household at gunpoint. <laughs> These guys, Anoka County SWAT. This is training footage. They don't wear body cameras, so there's no video of what actually happened. Did either of you hear them knock first? No. And they're like, do you know what we're here for? I'm like, no. The SWAT team armed with this warrant, signed by Judge Thomas Fitzpatrick, authorizing a nighttime search without announcement, looking for firearms and specific clothing. Do you even have a gun in the home? No. My, my, I wouldn't have a gun. I'm not a gun person. My I, mom's like scared of them. I am Sorry. actually. I actually am. So why was Bianca's home targeted? It's spelled out in SWAT team after action reports. Minneapolis police were investigating a robbery in the Lake Street Target parking lot. The victim was robbed of a handgun at gunpoint. The identified suspect reported to have been living at a Coon Rapids address in Anoka County. A Minneapolis detective got the no-knock search warrant and asked Anoka to help serve it. But the address information, clearly not verified, was badly outdated. I just don't understand how they messed it up that bad. Like, we've been living here for almost an entire year and you raided the wrong house. These types of no-knock warrant mistakes can end badly. Say her name! Brianna Taylor, the most high profile example. Hey, hands up, hands up. But there are plenty of others here in Minnesota and around the country. They result in people being injured, property being destroyed, and people losing their lives. State Representative Athena Hollins introduced a bill to regulate when no knocks can be used in Minnesota, limiting them to cases involving murder in the first, hostages, kidnapping, terrorism, and human trafficking. We need to work with law enforcement to make sure that we're doing our due diligence before invading someone's home and potentially the wrong person's home. What due diligence was done to make sure that the proper individuals were staying in their house? That would be a question for MPD. Anoka County Sheriff James Stewart admits they did none of their normal fact checking or surveillance before his SWAT team busted in Bianca's doors. They trusted MPD to have done that since it was their warrant. It'll certainly cause us to pause and reflect how we interact with outside investigating agencies. Spokesman John Elder said MPD acted on the best information available and the suspect still had mail going to that Coon Rapids address. So like Bianca shock. agrees mail for the prior tenant does still mistakenly show up at their house, but says it wouldn't have taken much police work to see a new family lives here. I just felt like it was they were, didn't really like put in a f like they didn't do effort. anything. Could authorities have done more? We're not naming the suspect since he hasn't been charged, but our investigation found he has a current address in St. Paul. It's easy to find right on the state court's public website. What's more, he's on probation for a prior conviction and has to keep his address current with Anoka Community Corrections which tells Kara Levin he's in full compliance. So the right address was available all along. A little fact checking by MPD could have saved an innocent family, a damaged home. Yeah, it's just like held by bolts and screws right now. And a lot of mental trauma. And I actually asked them, I'm like, what would it have, what would have taken for you guys to like shoot us, honestly? For Kara Levin Investigates, I'm AJ Lego. The bill limiting no knock warrants passed the House. It hasn't gained traction in the GOP controlled state Senate yet, but will be negotiated when the two sides meet for conference committees.